Welcome back to another episode of Moto GP Mac, and today we're going to talk about Mir's cursed time so far in the Repsol Honda team. Now, to say that Mir is having a pretty crap season so far would be a little bit of an understatement. You know, it has definitely been probably one of the biggest challenges of Mir's career so far, and you know, he didn't compete in any of the races in Mugello after breaking a finger on his hand during the practice sessions. He is also ruled out for next weekend's race in the Saxon ring. And if I'm very honest, we could probably count the amount of races that Mir has finished this year on one hand and still have some change left. Which, you know, for a rider of Mir's caliber is pretty disappointing. But saying that, you know, other, let's just call it people that are using the second seat in Repsol Honda have also suffered the same fate. If you look at Danny Pedrosa, you could see what happened. If you look at Jorge Lorenzo, five-time world champion, couldn't get on with the bike. The bike actually eventually hurt him and scared him enough to stop racing altogether. Polo Spagro had an absolute nightmare two years. And when you look at what's happening to Mir at the moment, it's just like history repeating itself over and over again. Now, to be fair, if we look at Mir's last season on the Suzuki, you could see that when Suzuki put the horsepower through the chassis, of the Suzuki, they lost front end feel. Rins was able to cope with it better than Mir was. And Mir did, to be fair, crash a lot. Fast forward to this year on a Honda, and I suppose we could see this coming. Honda can't feel the front end. They don't know what the front end is doing. And therefore, Mir is suffering and crashing a lot. We also know the troubles that Honda are in you know, with the bike in itself, that they're still completely lost. Now, Kawuchi is in there, but, you know, he is an engineer and not a magician. Do you know, it is going to take time to engineer their way out of this. And this got me thinking to, realistically, what do Honda need to do? And this is my view of it. I think Honda probably need to get rid of Marc Marquez, possibly... Joanne Muir and bring in two ordinary non-alien or non even on the threshold of alien riders and I know this sounds very odd and crazy but if you look at it in this point of view if you can take an average MotoGP rider which they're all excellent don't get me wrong but say an average in talent in the scheme of things and make that rider and use the feedback from that rider to make an average rider fast. Then my view is that if you can do that, you can make a bike that an alien can do extraordinary things at. And if you look at the Ducati, for instance, any rider that gets on that bike is going to be quick. You know, so therefore... Or say, I'm going to say majority because not every Ducati rider is super quick, right? But majority of the Ducati riders are fast. And that is because the bike is good. You put an alien on that bike and they'll do extraordinary things. Peko, I know people are saying, you know, oh, he's only winning because he's on a Ducati. But he's also the fastest Ducati rider. Do you know what I mean? So he's the fastest one of them on it. So that in turn makes him an alien. Do you know what I mean? So I know it's a bit out there, but I would definitely love to know your thoughts on it. What do you think of Honda getting rid of Mir and Marquez, putting two riders, ordinary riders, let's just call it, of MotoGP standard on the bike, developing the bike that the average rider can ride quickly and then go after their alien? Definitely leave your thoughts in the comments below and I'll be back again tomorrow with another video.